Bleeps. Taser thing. But neither stand still to the cops. Battling on the front line. Taser! Taser! Our Nottinghamshire's finest. Stop out for impact. Highly trained pursuit drivers. Specialists in entry. <laughs> Search. Four ounces of cannabis. Rapid response firearms officers. On police! Show yourself now! Please for the dumb stop! And the crime stopping force <laughs> of the dog unit. Get down on the floor! Wherever the battle takes them, they'll never back down. Because come at the hour. Yeah, Pats, we've still got him. Up on the back wheel, off side of the road. Come at the interceptors. Where are you from? Please, please, don't come to knock him again, will you? Coming up. The vehicle is now failing to stop. A phantom forester takes the team off-road. NH, uh, the vehicle is off-road across uh, farmer's fields, lags off. Please, come to the door! A wanted suspect gets a wake-up call. And... Vehicle stop, vehicle stop. A lorry driver on the run from the law. Front near tire looks like it's shredded and there's rubber kicking back. shift. Rain has been pouring, the wind is howling, and Maggot and John's stomachs are rumbling. What do you want to eat? I need to buy some of Got a little bit of shepherd's pie, mate, but always goes nice with some chips or something, doesn't it? <laughs> Before a chippy treat... That's that forester. They've got to deal with a phantom forester up to criminal tricks. It's a, a Subaru forester that has been seen in suspicious circumstances over the last few nights, driving in and out of farmers' fields, suspected stealing plants and uh, even the GPS trackers off the top of tractors. Intel shows the 4x4 is heading towards them. We think it's all South Muscum or Brownells, all right. Do you got any preference which you want us to take? To get the car off the road, the interceptors have strength in numbers. Also on the hunt is fellow team member, Dan. Oh, come on, we'll come off at Muskim. He's up towards Muskim now. Along with Sergeant Neil and Jess. I think it's 19 miles from us. The Forester is top of their Halloween hot list. We're out towards Randall's, all right, then. I would put my mortgage on it that if we get behind this, it will fail to stop. And I'll second him that he'll go straight off-road. With 19 years on the force, Mystic Macca is armed with a crystal ball and advanced driving skills. But first, they need to find the Forester. Incognito in the unmarked, John and Macca plot up on the road. Intel suggests the motor is travelling on. 6-5, uh, just here for we are positioned at the crop hole. Turn off. And they don't have to wait long. Yeah. An aid from Oscar Romeo 65. Ah. We are behind that vehicle. It is, uh, I think it is making off. Following in stealth mode, the interceptors aren't sure if the driver has spotted them. Speed is 7-0. Uh, Initially thought he was making off, but uh, he's maintaining 7-0 in lane 1. Wishful thinking. It looks like the 4x4 driver has clocked them. Speed is now up to 9 0. He is uh, lane 2. We're approaching the Carlton under tread to turn off. Lane 2 with uh, heavies in lane 1. Sorry, off, off, off. It looks like Mystic Macca's premonition might be on the money. I'm going to like to. Yeah. John. What do you think? If he overtakes this, I'm going yeah. to like something. Yeah, he is. She is uh, overtaken on the blind bend. The vehicle is now failing to stop. Other units are en route as backup. 10-4. To the team, and I'm going to go. Just touching on Trent. 
and it's down to John and Maka to keep on the Forester's tail. Road is damp. There is uh, minimal other traffic. Uh, we've got no indication as to how many people are in the vehicle if there are any weapons. The speed is currently uh, 90 uh, through Sutton on Trent. If Maka's second Halloween prediction is as spookily accurate, he is continuing Great North Road, stop by left, 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 stop by for road name. The Forester won't be staying on the road for long. He's off road, mate. Uh, it's, uh, the vehicle is off road across uh, farmers' fields, lights off. It is a uh, going to be a loss loss at this point. I can't go in that junction. No, no. Stuck. I just I only didn't get stuck because of the speed I was travelling. Yeah. The Subaru Forester might be a better off roader than the Interceptor's Volvo. He's going to want to get back on the A1, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but John and Macca are going to try and cut off a possible escape route at the other end of the field. You know, when we had that bet with you that it would definitely fail to stop and it would definitely go off-road? <laughs> we were right, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> These roads are so slippy, mate. Yeah. Reaching the other side of the field, there's no sign of the Forester. So, Sergeant Neil tries his look off-road. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, there's a trap still there. Mac has got one more Halloween prophecy. I bet you any money, mate, he's lights out in this field. Mm. Exactly where it went off road for you, John. I've just driven up the grass and there's a car in the field lights out. Yeah, it's uh, abandoned doors open. He's got it. Abandoned doors open. He's gone straight up that field at the end and stopped. <laughs> Poor weather conditions prevent the police helicopter from lifting, so the team turned to another tool to search for the suspects. So the car's over there in the field, dumped. Um, so we're just putting the drone up to see if we can find anyone in the field. Taking off. The drone's just lifting. Ten four, mate. Drone's up. Despite the drone being fitted with an infrared camera, I'm just looking for any sort of movement in the field. There's no joy with the eye in the sky. Perhaps the hound on the ground will have more luck. Come on. She come. Police dog Reno picks up a scent leading away from the dumped car and leads his handler Duffy not to a set of suspects, but the next best thing. A set of car keys ditched in a hedge. Hey, up, Reno. Hey, up, big lad. Hey, up. Well done. You're a good boy, aren't you? Yeah. We were a good boy, found them keys. He's done so incredibly well that he's found the car keys in a bush about a mile and a half away. We're clearly on the right path, but they made it to the A1 before we made it to him. The suspects have disappeared, but thanks to Reno, Dan can recover the Forester. And it looks like the interceptors have put the Frighteners on some major criminal activity this Halloween. So, we update it. Looks like... These guys are out uh, looking to steal fuel from uh, the lorries on the A1. Uh, back to the gunners in the back with uh, fuel cans. So, oh yeah. This is a vehicle which we come across quite a lot uh, in the north of the county. Um, good solid form four with the seats taken out the back, loads of boot space. They'd probably take this vehicle off-road to an adjacent field next to the carriageway, run the pie probably for 30 feet. would obviously allow them just to empty all the lorry fuel tanks as the drivers are asleep. Tints are us, aren't required on a vehicle like this. If just get some black spray paint, but obviously that means you can't see that it's got loads of fuel drums in the back. Dead crude, but we've prevented thousands of pounds worth of fuel there being stolen tonight. Police one thieves nil. Hey, Custy. <laughs> now there's just a small task of getting the cars out of a boggy field and back on the road. Here you dares, Daniel. No problem for the forester. You just keep it on the uh, on the bike. We've got one, two, three, push. One. But the interceptor's fleet requires a bit more elbow grease. Yeah. Don't let it stop. <sighs> Do 
cheese and beans. There you go. Keep it straight. Keep going. You're on terra firma. The Skoda may be back on the road, but there'll be no more fuel thefts for the Phantom Forester as it was scrapped. Coming up. Success with the big red key. Ungainly. Okay. Should have done it. And back towards the doorway. One man on foot. The dangerous driver gives the ropes team the runaround. Security. Hi. Two two. Got him visually undergrowth. Trying to get to the A one. Interceptors have got stinger operations down to a fine art. Although some vehicles pose a much larger problem. How else do you stop an HGV that doesn't want to stop? Uh, you know, you certainly can't box it with cars or anything like that. And the damage they can cause it to hit anything they don't want to stop is immeasurable, really. The force, particularly recently, has invested in some uh, stingers that are made for bigger things, so buses, HGVs, anything with thicker tyres. Um, which opens up a range of options, and knowing that you're able to sting any potential vehicle that could be involved in anything is uh, helpful. A1 southbound. The interceptors are on the tail of a stolen lorry, which is rampaging down the carriageway. Not something they see every day. It's too dangerous to box in 18 tons of runaway HGV, but the team have another plan. At the rear, a rolling roadblock protecting innocent drivers from ending up in the lorry's perilous path. In the eye of the pursuit, all units can do is follow the careering HGV closely. The only safe way to take the wind out of the driver's sails is to take the air out of his tyres with a stinger. So up ahead, an interceptor is laying down one of the new heavy-duty stingers covering both lanes of the carriageway. Stinger primed. Two car blues inside. Lorry inbound. Vehicle stop, vehicle stop. A direct hit. But the high tailing HGV continues its charge. The desperate driver is keeping his foot down, but the effects of the stinger are starting to take hold. One tyre down, the lorry still has nine left. Under 10 miles an hour. From Oscar Ward, is there anything we can do on the up to a thousand carriage, which is a very sterile area in case of decal? It looks like the high risk HGV driver has a sudden change of heart and gets back on the gas. Front near tyre looks like it's shredded and there's rubber kicking back. Two tyres down and picking up speed. I think they're now struggling with directional control and coming to the near side, anticipating a decal. Also lost possibly three tyres now, sir. Three tyres down, seven to go, and he's on course for a second stinger. An interceptor out front blocks an exit off the A1. I'm 
to be detained by a private security dog handler who films the encounter on his phone. The reason you'll be detained is because I suspect you've run for police, yeah? Right, OK. Were well, you driving the HGV that's gone past? Right, sounds OK, no worries. Yeah, no worries, mate. Just don't stand up, because I will set the dogs on you, if needs be. OK, sounds. The dog handler and his security dogs, Bella and Boris, keep watch until the cops are on scene. And within minutes, Stand by and flight down. the interceptors arrive to get the driver in cuffs. Hey, show me your hands now. Show me your hands. Put your hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Not a minute now. Right. Mate, you're under arrest. Yeah, yeah. Suspicion of theft of motor vehicle. Listen to me. Yeah, I'm the theft of motor vehicle. They stop police. Dangerous driving. If you got a license. Right, driving my license, driving no insurance as well, alright? Turns out the lorry is empty and was stolen from West Yorkshire. Wow. Hey, have we got anyone there? Three tyres, I'll take that. While the dangerous driver isn't responsible for the theft, he certainly racked up a fair few offences of his own. Why'd you run there? Oh, mate, you just got as well. Do you fear they're under arrest for that, alright? Just wait there. You want to be grateful that bloke has control of his dogs, otherwise you'd be fit to high heaven. No bite, but his conviction did carry a sting. For dangerous driving, driving whilst disqualified and without insurance, he was sentenced to 19 months behind bars and banned from the roads for six years. Searching properties is part and parcel of the interceptor's job. Ah. Yeah. Nice. Some class A here. That's the... But life isn't always made easy with a key. If there's something... Okay. ...or someone they need to get hold of, the interceptors will be getting in one way... <laughs> ...or another. Armed 
response cops Rich and Ash are en route to arrest a man wanted on suspicion of a serious assault. We've had a call to say that he's been seen go into a property. Uh, he's got previous encounters with officers, it's been quite violent. So we've got another car with us, um, so the four of us in total uh, gives us enough resources to uh, front and back the address, cover any uh, escape routes and um, get a nice containment on. I'll park up just short so we're not uh, blowing it, hopefully. Yeah. Firearms cops aren't only crack shots, but are also trained in the fine art of forcing entry. So we'll go back to the With the flat surrounded, Ash tries to make contact with the wanted man. Sounds like someone's coming down. Yeah, I've heard noises. There's movement inside, but the door remains locked. The police, come to the door! Definitely heard. Moving. I'll keep put uh, like on the same time. Yeah. So a composite door, mate. Looks like it's had some uh, enforcement work before. The potentially dangerous wanted man could be holed up inside. Let's give him one last shout on the door's going in. The police! Come to the door! I will enforce it! If whoever's in the flat won't come out, the interceptors are going to have to let themselves in. Go top first, yeah. You ready? Yep. of Big Red Key, and they're in, nearly. Right, come on then. Open the door. Their wanted man is inside. Just come to the door. What is the door, mate? Stop on But his offer to open the door has come a little too late. Right, step back away from the door. Tell me what's going on. Let's go watch him, mate. Former intelligence analyst Rich joined the force to catch criminals, and at a statuesque six foot three tall, he's certainly not going to let the small issue of height stop him from getting a wanted man in bracelets. One going link. Okay. Should have asked the door. At this moment in time, we're resting on suspicion of a serious assault. He's inside, he's in cuffs, he's, he's not, not causing any problems. Um, why he answered, didn't answer the door, I don't know. At least when the first strike went in, but now we've made a mess of it. It's on him, really, isn't it? The wanted man was staying at a friend's house, so he might not be too popular when his mate gets home. Hello. Hello. How are you? Shall we wander outside, mate? Yeah. Hello. He's been arrested. Yeah, he's been arrested. He'll be interviewed once he's taken into custody. And then he can put his side of things across there, but for now he's off the streets and uh, it's one less person we're looking for. After questioning, the case against the wanted man was dropped by the CPS. Hopefully his friend won't be too upset about the door. Coming up, it's hitting nearly 300 cameras a day, which would probably make it the most active car we've ever encountered. Intel checks lead to a big stash. I think my colleague's found so he's been in the car, mate. All right. What have you got? Coke. And roadworthy checks lead to an unhappy customer. Here you go. It's been a pleasure. Technology is the proactive interceptor's best friend, and the intel it provides can shine a light on criminal activity that could have otherwise got unnoticed. We've got massive AMPR networks, we've got well-populated intelligence systems, we've got the police national computer, and literally a, a tap of a couple of keys on my lap on the computer that I'm sat with now links all these systems together, and it gives us just a massive heads up. You know, we can track people, track vehicles, and it just gives us a much bigger picture and a much better picture around 
sort of who we're going for and how we can catch them really. But it's got a massive, massive part to play in what we do. Early evening in Nottingham. That white golf is it you say it's on the move, isn't it, Joe? Ken and Matt from the City Dive Crime team are running hogs on a white golf, which ANPR cameras have shown is very busy around Nottingham. Before we picked up the other day, it's extremely active. Yeah, it's probably over again. Spotting the golf pulled up near the city student accommodation. Pulled over again, half not Hampton, the next one up. And with intel suggesting the car could be linked to drug dealing, Ken moves the Mark Volvo out of sight to avoid spooking the driver. It's still there, still there. Keeping eyes on from a distance, the golf driver is soon on the move. It's got to be worth having a look at, isn't it? We'll come in, put a stop in. As Ken and Matt turn the corner, they find him pulling over up ahead. I'll put you alongside it and then I'll just... Hello, mate. Is it your motor? Yeah. It is. Where have you just come from? Where have you come from? Yeah. Because okay. I thought I saw you pulled up over there and then down there and now here. I just wondered why you've done so many short journeys. Nottinghamshire's knife crime teams racked up over 450 drug seizures last year. And Ken's got a feeling this lad has something to hide. Done some checks and it's hitting nearly 300 cameras a day. I think it was all, this one particular hit, which would probably make it the most active car we've ever encountered. You know, um, and for us, unless you're a taxi driver or something like that, you're not going to be hitting anywhere near those sorts of cameras. For us, that tends to be an indication of drug dealing. Something not quite right. He's trying to play it cool inside, but I think we're definitely going to be onto a search, I think. The chill driver now says he's hired the car from a friend. There's information linking this vehicle to the supply of drugs. And in fairness, it doesn't mention you, it's the vehicle. Um, but the dates are quite close to where we are now. So you and the vehicle are going to be searched under Section 23 Misuse of Drugs Act. You haven't got anything on you, you shouldn't have, have you? Come on, for what? Well, that's what you're going to be searched for, because I think there could be drugs within the vehicle. But well, I don't understand why. Well, like I've just explained to you. Just step out for me. With backup on scene in case the suspect makes a bid for freedom. Oh, well. Just come back over here for a spot. Sorry. The team get cracking with the search. Ken spent a decade on the beat, including nearly four years on the knife crime team. And although nothing is found on the driver. Mike, go and join the Sarge. Cuffs on him. Ken quickly lays hands on more than travel suites. I think my colleagues found something in the car, mate. All right. What have you got? Coke. You're under arrest, mate, for some suspicion of possession with intent to supply Class A drugs, namely cocaine, OK? You just have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. But mention when questions in late running court. And if you do say, you move the evidence to stand that. You should open this car, mate. I'll get you sat in the back of it, all right? Let's have a seat in there, pal. There looks to be something for whatever a potential customer might fancy. Oh, right. a selection of pills. More suspected Class A's, prescription pills and cash are seized. MDMA or Exodus X tablets as well, I think. Probably about 100, 200. It's like a big bag of them. The relaxed driver will be interviewed in custody about the pit stops and the stash of suspected Class A's, but for Ken and Matt, it's back to the station to take stock. Must be, what, three ounce there? Yeah, I would have thought so. It looks, it's a lot of packaging isn't there, but there's still a lot of drugs there. I don't know what the going rate for a gram of Coke is. 50 quid? Yeah, I think so. So, if he's got 28 grams, that's an ounce, that's... 1400 excuse my math 1400 so if he's got three ounces you've got best part of three four grams worth of drugs there and that's just the cocaine and I, I, there's definitely other drugs in there there'll be tablets that'll probably be 10 pound a tablet and i think i've seen 100 tablets maybe some people just don't think you'll search that well but it wasn't even that well hidden 
at St Anne's Nick, Ken is booking in the evidence, and it's clear police intel trumps dodgy dealings. We can see we've actually got a rather significant haul. Um, what we can see is a variety of drugs here. We've got what we believe to be cocaine, ketamine, MDMA, ecstasy, and LSD. All that to me says that this deal is targeting a younger audience, uh, be it students or certainly, you know, for the most part, the party drugs. We've got the money there. Well, that's, you know, a £1,000 plus. He's no longer in control of, but the drugs themselves are going to be worth thousands of pounds. So it's definitely a dent in his wallet. Uh, it's a success for us. It just goes to show sometimes if you kind of um, you follow your nose, you follow your instincts, you, you see something, it doesn't feel right um, to act on that. And actually, you can get some pretty good results from it. The driver has been released under investigation on suspicion of dealing cocaine, LSD and MDMA. The fourth most common reason for a motor to fail its MOT is having tyres which aren't fit for the road and, if left unchecked, the results could be disastrous. When you look at a vehicle, you've pretty much only got an area size the palm of your hand that's actually keeping you on the road, so you've got four, four corners out with the car. So if you're letting your tyres uh, deteriorate to the point there's no tread, uh, one, it's not going to be able to displace water sufficiently, so you're going to end up backward planing, but also if you're down to the cords or even bulges and tears, you're on a motorway at high speed, should that tyre pop, uh, you, you end up going to lose control. Uh, so not only is putting you in danger if you're crashing into something, but you're also putting other members of the public in danger. So uh, people need to take their responsibility around the uh, road readiness, because otherwise they will come a cropper. out on the late shift. Attention. Those dulcet robotic tones from the onboard ANPR camera mean a motor with a marker has just passed by. Phil spins round. And catches up with a truck which has a mark of a being driven by a man with a provisional license. father's footsteps by becoming an interceptor and loves the unpredictable nature of the job. Hello? Hey, how are you? I'm pretty cool. Oh, I'm to check who's driving. Why's that? Hey, where do you come from? I don't know, eh? You got your licence on you? Time to run a few checks. Here's your insurance. Yeah, right. I'm just asking. Hey, you're just blistered right back down the street and turn around. The good news is the driver is legit. Bad news is that eagle-eyed Phil has spotted a problem. Just noticed his tyre is quite uh, worn uh, on the out of the outer edge of it. Phil needs to give the tyres a proper once-over. This might not go down well. We're going to do a roadworthy check on the vehicle. I'm going to ask you to jump in. I'm going to ask you to do certain net things so I can check on. All right. Is that a refusal? My I've got burgled Saturday, and yet again, your new one's come out to my house. Right, OK. I'm not dealing with that. I'm dealing with this vehicle. Can I get out of my Absolutely. Jump in, drive this seat forward. Yeah, no, front line of... Forward, 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 Right, can you turn your wheels to face that way for me? Thank you very much. Just leave the vehicles like that. A swift inspection. This uh, tyre is uh, coming back at 0.95. The minimum should be 1.6 millimetres, so it's, it's way under. And Phil delivers the verdict. This tyre is below the limit. OK, so you can be receiving a ticket for that. Because it is below the limit, you'll also be receiving an immediate prohibition, so you won't be allowed to drive this vehicle any further. Under a prohibition notice, the truck will have to stay off the road until repairs have been checked by an MOT testing station. Best get it parked up. Steady. Time for Phil to dish out the ticket. 
You're going to be reported for the offence of driving motor vehicle on a public road with a front offside tyre below the legal limit. You'll be receiving some paperwork through the post. Uh, if you ignore it, you'll go straight to a court summons. Give you that. OK. Driving with a tyre below the legal tread depth limit could carry a sentence of three penalty points and a fine of up to £2,500. It cannot be driven on a public road until the tyre has been changed, OK? There will be a marker placed on the vehicle. You need to take the vehicle to an MOT testing station. They will issue a new MOT certificate confirming the tyre has been changed. You'll then need to go into the police station with this paperwork and we'll take the prohibition notice off. Can you pay for my diesel? Uh, I just need a signature from there. Can you pay for my diesel to get this? Can you put a signature there? Sorry, Sorry, sign it. OK, just so. Thank you very much. Everything's, everything's explained on the back of this form, if you forget, but do you understand what you need to do? So would you like me to explain it again to you? Yeah. OK, then. Right. The vehicle has been given an immediate... A quick recap, position. and it should be job done. Here you go. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Ultimately, if they want to behave like that, they can do, but we're still not going to change the fact that the vehicle's prohibited from moving and the driver's going to end up getting the ticket. Their vehicle, their responsibility, they need to check, make sure it's roadworthy. It's all right than driving around on slate to put themselves in danger and everybody else. The woman was reported for driving with a tyre below the legal limit, but later received no further action. The transit had a new tyre fitted and the prohibition notice was lifted. Still to come. Have you got any insurance? That's the truth, mate. Is it? When one search ends... Uh, what have I got my mark keys now? Having a mare here. Another begins. Where they are, then. Patrolling north of the city are Gav and Dan. There's a white golf knocking about in the area. It's just on one of our AMPL cameras. And uh, it's showing that it's not insured. Don't know who's going to be driving it, if they are insured or not, but it could be worth a stop if we see it. Years and years and years driving around this estate when yeah. I first started. I did too. If you had a day round here again, you'd soon get back used to the roads, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Local knowledge soon pays off. That's it. Whoever's driving the allegedly uninsured golf has stopped at the shops, so Gab positions the unmarked Skoda further up the street. Oh, sit here then, mate. It's only a matter of time until the golf's on the go. Here he goes, mate. He's reversing. Coming down this way. Stop straight away. You ready? Yeah. That was easy. Hello, you all right? Hello. You just come past the uh, AMPR camera in the car saying there's no insurance, no MOT. Okay. Have you got any insurance? No, that's the truth, mate. Is it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Just come and stand off the road for us, mate. The bloke fesses up in record time. Any weed in there? Yeah, I'm not going to lie to them. OK. Have you got anything left on you? No, yeah, I have, mate, yeah. What have you got? Hey, see mate. There you go. A little bit there. OK. There you go, that's it. That's all you've got. Yeah. It seems Gavin Dan have stopped Mr Honest. So you're, you're, the, you're the guy who stops and just kind of like, yeah, fair enough, but some people aren't as, aren't as polite, mate. You should go, I it's as simple as I am, Some people aren't as polite, mate, but, yeah. No wonder we have scratches on our cars. It's like a desk, isn't it? Mm. It's an open and shut case. So you will be reported for consideration of the question of prosecuting you for driving without insurance and a valid MOT. You don't have to say anything. In no time at all, there's an uninsured driver off the road. Interceptors are taking the cannabis and the car off his hands. Is that what you Yes, thanks. All the best, mate. And sending the bloke on his way with a cannabis warning, as well as a pending six penalty points and £400 in fines. As easy as that. Uh, what have I done with my keys now? I'm having a mare here. Although there is one slight hitch. So this is, this is the and finally story for interceptors. Have I given you... Gav can't find the Skoda key. You're not giving it to him, have you? Mate, hang on. <laughs> I probably have. Bella. Bella. 
I might have given you the wrong keys here. What we don't need to tell Gav is actually the engine in our car's running. The car key is actually in the car. So we'll see how long it takes for Gav to realise that that is the case. Mate, he ain't got him. TV's Gav Hall is now going to be stressing. So let's see how he reacts to us now. CID team as they close in on their target. Police suspect number one is brand new next. 